Welcome to SDH's coverage of the USL W League. And what we're going to do is we'll let you know about what's going on in the South Central and the South Atlantic. We've got a, a matchup of the week, which comes from the South Central, and we catch up with life in the South Atlantic. And our guest this week that's going to run the anchor leg, Jim Robbins, the head coach of South Georgia Tormenta on the USLW side of things. And we'll find out what's going on with them as the season has gotten underway in the South Atlantic. We'll go over all the standings, all the matchups, what you need to know for the next seven days, and get you prepped for everything going on in the two divisions in the South here in the USLW. All right, let's go backward before we go forward and let you know what's going on and what happened over the last handful of days. We'll start back um, on the 27th and with uh, activity in the South Atlantic, Wake knocked off Fayetteville Fury by the final of 2-0. That one was at Ting Park on the stadium campus. It was at Carolina Ascent really putting up some big numbers in USLW as they get ready for the USL Super League. 5-0 winners over Charlotte Eagles at Manchester Meadow. Also on the board in a South Atlantic, North Carolina Courage continued their winning ways over North Carolina Fusion by the score of 1-0. In the South Atlantic, South Carolina United went up against South Georgia Tormenta, and South Georgia Tormenta came out winners by the final of 4-1. Asheville City in the South Central beat Athens United by the score of 4-0, and that's our matchup of the week. Here's your highlights of Ash City and Athens United, courtesy of Asheville City SC, their own selves, and the USLW League. ABASA is Asheville's premier adult soccer league. It offers soccer quickly. all year round. Is it ABASA? Christic into the box. Christic leaves it off. The shot low, deflected away. Secondary attempt Ooh. off the deflection. Thryso makes it 2 nothing Asheville City. That's an Asheville City goal. Old Dominion zone. Fires a ball that glances off the glove of Johansson before tucking itself into the back of the net. And in the 13th minute, Asheville City's up 2 0. It'll be out swinging right footed effort on the way. Slides one towards the spot. Nodded by Wells, popped up, still loose in the box. Nice little bit of step over the clip from distance. Oh, it's just about brilliant from Morell. Just about brilliant. It's over Johansson, who doesn't see it till late. And that's just a bit of magic, a bit of class from Abby Morell. It really was. She was dancing around for a minute there. Followed her feet. Thought she was going to play it backwards, actually. But so did the defender. And just a little chip beats the keeper. Playing out of the back. Here comes the Asheville press. Tried to flip up. We'll be out for an Asheville throw. Flipped over the top, trying to find Porter. Into the box, nice turn, a foul spotted, and it was the jersey tug that got the whistle. Both teams now have been spotted for the foul two times. On the ground, flipped away by Mujerera. Into the middle of the pitch, dangerous. Bertrand seizes on, looks up, the shot. Oh, it's spectacular from Bertrand cashing in on the mistake from Athens. It's 4-0, Asheville City, and Bertrand bending it into the top corner. Oh, it's a touch of class. That gets us into uh, the standings for both of the divisions. I'll let you know what's going on so far this season in the South. And uh, in the South Atlantic and in the uh, South Central. So uh, we'll lay it all out for you. South Atlantic right now, after three matches, North Carolina Courage U23s, they are at, with a 2-0 and oh and 1 record, average points 2 and a third. They've got seven points. Carolina Ascent, they've scored 10 goals in their first four matches. They've got a 3-1 and one record, nine points, averaging two and a quarter points a match. They've only given up two goals so far this season, so goal difference is eight. North Carolina Fusion, same record, less goal scored, less goal difference. Wake FC, they are also at nine points, also four matches played. 
Less goals scored, less goal difference. South Georgia Tormenta, they are at seven points after their first four matches, 2-1-1, one, and one, 11 goals on the board, six allowed. So they have a one and three quarters points per match average. Bantams right now, four matches, they are at one and three and three points. Goal difference of minus five. Charlotte Eagles, they have played four matches there, one and three. Goal difference of minus six. And Fayetteville have played five matches yet to win so far this season. South Central Division, it is a Tennessee SC. They put 15 on the board in a match earlier this year against Athens United. Three matches, three wins, and they're rolling so far. Asheville City has played five matches. They are 4-1. and one. They average 2.4 per match. Birmingham Legion, three matches, 2-1, and one, six total points, two matches per – or two points per match. Greenville Liberty, a point and a third per match through four with a record of 1-1-1. One, one, and one. Chattanooga Red Wolves, 1-2-2, one, two, and two, five points, and they have played five matches. SSA, the Swarm, they are at 1-2-1 one, and one in four matches played, so they are averaging one point per match as well. Remember, we had the uh, Athens United match as one of our uh, focus matches early on here in, in the season. So at South Central is Tennessee, Asheville City, Birmingham Legion, Greenville Liberty, Chattanooga Red Wolves, Southern Soccer Academy, and Athens United. So that gets us ready for the uh, action going on for the upcoming week. And what we'll do is we'll uh, let you know what's going on in the schedule in both of these divisions. Because uh, And so we'll uh, let you know that your your head's got to be on a swivel for all of these. Uh, also, you've got uh, at Spain Park tomorrow in the South Central, Birmingham Legion is hosting SSA, so you've got to keep an eye on uh, that one as you go. Also in uh, South Central at Paladin Stadium, Greenville Liberty hosting Tennessee SC, a road test for Tennessee SC. 7.30 at CHI Memorial, Chattanooga Red Wolves hosting Athens United, and that gets you uh, into the month of June and what's been uh, going on in uh, the South Atlantic Stadium field. It is North Carolina Courage, and they are hosting Wake FC. That's at 6 o'clock on June 1st, and that gets us uh, a little further on into the schedule with all of the matchups happening on the 1st, the 2nd, and the 3rd. South Atlantic, North Carolina Fusion at McPherson, 7 o'clock on the 1st, hosting Charlotte Eagles at uh, – South Carolina United Bantams, they host Fayetteville Fury, 7 o'clock on the 1st. And that carries us to SSA at Marathon Park, hosting Greenville Liberty. That is June 2nd at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. South Georgia Tormenta hosting Carolina Ascent two times in six days. We'll get into that coming up in just a little bit with South Georgia Tormenta's head coach. First one of those, Tormenta Stadium on the 2nd at 6 o'clock on the board. Tennessee SC responds with the match on the road. They return home to Nolansville to uh, take on Asheville City. That one's at 5 o'clock on June the 4th. And then in the South Atlantic and the South Central, a very, very busy June 4th, by the way. And that gets us into uh, the month of June and to the the end of our grid with uh, South Atlantic Fusion hosting Wake at McPherson, Legion hosting Red Wolves at Spain Park, Liberty hosting SSA at Furman University, and uh, South Carolina United is hosting uh, the Charlotte Eagles at Charlotte Christian. So that gets us uh, through your Tuesday. And then you're kind of getting into the activity in the southeast, the Metropolitan uh, Ascent play three times basically in a six-day period. They host uh, Fayetteville Fury on the 5th at at the uh, uh, community school. That one is on June 5th at 6 o'clock. So keep an eye on that one. It's going to be a tough stretch for Carolina Ascent with three matches in basically a week's time and two of those going up against uh, South Georgia Tormenta. So it's going to be a stacked schedule for teams in the uh, USLW in the South Atlantic and the South Central as they go forward. So as promised, it's time to catch up with uh, the head coach of South Georgia Tormenta on the USLW League side, Jim Robbins. We find out what's going on with him and South Georgia Tormenta so far this season. It's our interview right here, running the anchor leg on SDH. If you were to give yourself a report card to this particular point of the season, I know it's only a handful of matches in, you're four matches in, and because of points and averages and things like that, it's you're, you're two, one, and one. But how would you how would you grade what you've done so far with Tormenta this year? 
Well, I think uh, if we break it down in a couple of areas, I'd say give ourselves an A in terms of player recruitment. Uh, we have a fantastic group. Uh, the talent is is there. I mean, we have a very deep squad. I think it's our deepest team in the three years that I've been at Torment in the three years that we've been in the league. So definitely an A in that area. I think in terms of how we're playing and representing the club and representing our style of play, I'd say B+. Plus. Right now, I mean, we did did very well in the first game on a tough field against Fayetteville, you know, going away to North Carolina you know, and grabbing a point there you know, so early in the season. I think that was huge for us. Uh, we tried to make a couple of tactical adjustments going into the return game at home. Uh, had a great 45 minutes. I mean, we, we did very well for ourselves, gave them a little bit of an easy goal. But, uh, you know, give the girl credit. She had a great shot. You know, we got one back before the half, and then we struggled for the better part of the second half. You know, heat may have been a factor. Uh, I'm not completely sure. Uh, but then we re- rebounded great last night up at Bantham's. Uh, you know, had a good result, uh, probably our most complete game you know, in terms of how we want to play, how we like to play, and involving as many players as possible. So I think that's where we are right now. And then, obviously, we're staring down two tough games against Carolina Scent coming up in the next week. When it comes to recruitment, you you mentioned the recruiting aspect of this. Is it easier over time because you're that known entity or is it more difficult over time because you're that known entity and and, uh, part of USLW? Uh, I think right now, my opinion is probably it's split. I think it is there, there is some easier aspects of it because we are who we are. We were the 2022 champs and all the things that we accomplished there. So that definitely carries some weight. I think the college coaching community is more accepting now of their players going and playing in summer leagues like this. Um, I think the harder part for us now is, you know, the first year we had, what, 42 teams, 44 teams. I can't remember that exact number. And now we're up to 82. So, you know, that those players who we're trying to attract, obviously, are now – you're getting pulled in 82 different directions as opposed to 42. So that part makes it a lot harder. So yeah, we, I think we've uh, easily doubled, tripled the workload in terms of player recruitment from 2022 to now. But for me, I, I enjoy it. You know, it, 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 you sit there, you watch a lot of games, you talk to a lot of coaches, you try to figure out what your positional needs are for your team you know, based on players coming back and so on and so, so forth. But it's an important part of the prospect uh, uh, project and like I tell everybody, I think majority of the work is done between August and April if you're going to have a fun May, June, and July. So when you mention it goes from like 42 to a double that number now and when it comes to USLW, what's it been like to see the growth from when Tormenta became a part of it all to see where it is, knowing that, yeah, it's great for the growth of the game. It makes it more challenging for us as an organization to try to bring in players and be as competitive as we have been. What's it like just from that that holistic 30,000-foot approach to see the league get to where it is now? I think it's it's really cool. I think it's a huge opportunity for the girls and the women you know, to be able to play in all these great organizations in all these cool cities around the United States, you know, like specifically for us. Yeah. I mean, we enjoyed the division we were in the last two years, but, you know, due to uh, you know geography and all that, okay. They asked us to play in the North Carolina division. So for us to see different teams, go to different cities, you know, have different road trips, different experiences. Uh, I think all those things are fantastic. And, and now super league, you know, really coming to fruition here. You know, you're staring down a month, two months before this thing goes live. You know, I think that is is gigantic for the game. It's gigantic for the women. You know, I think it's it's a huge motivating factor for all of us, and it's really why we do what we do. Uh, and, and you and I talked about this. I think the first year that we were on the show, you know, to you know, my career started in the early to mid '90s as a coach. You know, right when Title IX was really enforced at the college level and to see, you know, 40, 50, 60 college programs turn into 300 in a blink of an eye. You now to see 42 teams turn to 82, turn to Super League, you know, eight teams, Super Leagues, 14 teams potentially for next year. I, mean, it, I think it's just awesome. So it's, it's been a wild ride. I'm glad I've been be able to be a part of it and had some fun along the way. Time to to brag on your your offense and your defense a little bit. Uh, for someone who hasn't had the chance to see you play in the South Atlantic this year, who are some of the key players that folks can gravitate toward 
when they do get the chance to track you down and either watch you in person or, or catch you uh, digitally these days? Yeah, I think, I mean, really, like we said at the top, we're, we're pretty deep in all, all lines of the, of the team right now. Goalkeeper position is strong. You know, Cora's done very well for herself. Uh, Jenna Moran, you know, played two games of the four already. You know, both have done fantastic, you know, back line. You know, Sarah Haig comes back now after she spent uh, two weeks in Germany for her sister's wedding, but you know, she's, she's a great player. Um, you know, Brianna Eads has has pleasantly surprised us as a left-sided center back. This is her first year with the team, but really athletic, fast, smart, you know, not afraid to go mix it up and, and defend and, and play a little bit physical. Uh, Momo Nakao, it, it playing an interior midfielder, you know, Japanese youth international, plays at Memphis, just, I mean, super tidy on the ball. So she's fun to watch. You know, Smith Cathy had a great game last night. You know, that's Georgia Southern product, you know, local Atlanta kid. Um, yeah, and, and take your pick up front. I mean, we are we are blessed with a lot of different attacking options. So I think it's just a question of who we want to put out there and, and who wants to assert themselves. You know, Carlin Presley has been fantastic as a left sided winger. He was played, I think, probably played 90 minutes in all four games so far. Super dangerous, tough to defend. You know, and then here comes Alice Nemtsov, who's been her, this her third year with the team. And Scored a ton of key goals for us the last couple of years, and she gets two last night and has one the other day and missed two games due to injury. So two games, three goals. You can't argue with that, but I mean, it, it really is take your pick. Who's your favorite? Who do you like? Uh, you know, so we're not starving for talent, and, and we'll rotate the squad as needed, and we'll be tested next week with those two games. You mentioned those two matches in uh, two matches in six days in the home and home going up against Carolina Ascent. Uh, when it comes to your your roster assembly and things like that, is your phone blowing up more internally these days, or are you still spending your your unlimited minutes outbound? I mean, when folks know that this league is coming in because of the the depth that you get to assemble, are folks dialing you up in the off season, or are you still having to sit there and and and, uh, and pound the pavement? No, it's it's been more inbound than outbound at the moment uh like i said people know who we are do you have international free minutes <laughs> i do my wife made me get that <laughs> so i do have that and like I, said, I, I got my friend boris he keeps calling me from paris so unfortunately i've been too busy to take his call but we do have to catch up so boris if you're listening we got to catch up but uh yeah it's it's been great we've had a lot of people who have reached out you know like i said they, they know our track record they know our history for producing players and sending players to the professional level we have some cool announcements, you know, coming from previous players that we can't really talk about on the show today, but that'll be coming. So that part is awesome. But uh, yeah, we've we've already had people reach out to uh, you know talk about the players that we have in the roster this year. You know, we already have some contacts with some Super League clubs. I mean, we have a couple tentative friendlies set up with them. You know, obviously our mission and goal is to get back to the postseason and, and try to get back to the final in mid to late July. But you know, if we can't do that. You know, we're scheduled to play two USL Super League teams and friendlies in July so they can evaluate our talent firsthand down at their location. So, you know, it, it's cool. It's a lot going on, but uh, our players deserve it. And we tell them that that's part of our job when they come to play for us. And that's uh, with the with the announcements of USLS and the, the, the schedule coming out. And now folks can sit there and sync their schedules with uh, with USLS and everything. And I think that it's uh, it's really cool to see. USL advance in these continued steps where it goes from W to, to S and you can have these kinds of, uh, of interactions all your way through. Do you still have to, you know, you, everybody knows who you are, but is there still in any way still a Statesboro stigma because of, oh, well, you know, small town halfway between Macon and Savannah, or is all of that geography abandoned and they're looking at the, the organization and understand where it's come from. Is there still any geographic bias when it comes to the club? A, a little bit of part of me wants to say yes, you know, because our area is so small, you know, because we sort of are tucked out, you know, where we are. But uh, like I said, it, I think the track record helps to, you know, minimize that bias and, and minimize that opinion. Um, and like said, we've been blessed. We've been fortunate that, you know, Darren and Nietzsche and ownership have given us all the tools and resources that we need to be successful, sort of in our corner of the world. We've we've shown that, we've proven that, 
I think that is, you know, speaking you know, at a higher volume, I think, than what the population of Statesboro really is kind of thing. But yeah, I mean, we go to Raleigh and it's a different animal when we go up there and you know, we just, we don't have, you know, that sort of that internal player pool to pick from, you know, in a 50 mile radius down here. So going back to what we said before, yeah, I, I really got to put the hours in, you know, I got to hit the pavement. I got to make the calls. I got to do the emails to try to get the players that we want to play at the level that we want to play for the area that our club is based in. So it has challenges, but so we're, we're definitely overcoming them. When you're out there and you're performing, if finish the sentence for me, when things are going well for Tormenta stylistically, stylistically, we look like blank on the pitch offensively and defensively. Great question. You know, I'm a huge Pep Guardiola fan. Yeah. I still am a Man United fan, even though I miss Sir Alex Ferguson. So it's hard for me to get on board with Pep at City. <laughs> we'll see that on the air, on the record. But no, uh, yeah, you know, I'm a huge Pep at Barcelona fan. I, I appreciate the way that Man City has been playing uh, under him. Uh, and, and yeah, if we're trying to sort of emulate a certain way to play, a certain style, that's, that's who we try to be. That's who we want to be. And, and like I said uh, last night, you know, that was our best, most complete game, you know, in the four games that we played. And I mean, it was fun to watch. Great compliments from the Bantam staff after the game. You know, they, they enjoyed the way we played. We enjoyed the way we played. Our kids really enjoyed the way that we played. And, and you know, our really our next step is can we you know, continue that process? I don't think we were 100 percent ourselves just yet. Still trying to figure things out. Still trying to get some chemistry. But huge step in the right direction. And, and if they're able to execute, they are very, very entertaining and fun to watch. My last question for you is when players that are attached to the, the USLW League side, when they, when they walk in and they have their first interactions as teams and team meals and such, do you employ the everybody's got to put their cell phone in the bucket and leave it outside the room as a part of team building and getting to know each other. Do you take that uh, Miss Nitra tenant and apply it to the W league? We absolutely do 100%. So that, again, that's one of the things that I think separates us from some of the other clubs that are out there. You know, the fact that we're able to live together, train together, share meals together. You know, now we're going on the road, full tour bus, everybody goes. So it's not just, hey, you made the 18 roster and, and you're heading to Raleigh. It's all 25, all support staff. So it is as family as family can be. Uh, and everything I've learned in the girls and the women's game over the last 30 plus years, I know that that is hugely important to us being successful and to us being able to achieve our goals. I don't think anybody at the organization looks at that part lightly. It sounds, sometimes it sounds Silly, oh, you do this, but I, I, I don't know. I, it, it's a huge piece for what we're doing. Always great to catch up with Jim and, and find out how uh, Pep Guardiola plays into life at South Georgia Tormenta. So that's very, very cool. And uh, thanks to, to Jim for running the anchor leg with us this week, to, uh, this week to let us know what's going on down there in Statesboro and at the U.S. W, w League. If you are near... Athens, Chattanooga, SSA, Nolansville, Birmingham, Greenville, Asheville, uh, North Carolina Courage, Fusion, Carolina Ascent, South uh, Carolina United, Bantam, Charlotte, Wake, Fayetteville, and Statesboro. If you are near any of those and can catch matches in the next week or any time during the USLW League season, please do. You get to see some of the great young players who are – uh, out of their college seasons, trying to get everything squared away for that next step in their careers. And so it's really cool to uh, catch up with them every single week here on SDH. If you are uh, in market and can make it by, please make it by. If you are in market and can't make it by, follow along on local providers and follow along on social media. And then also, if... You cannot be in market in time to watch. Once again, follow along on local providers and through their social media and us here every single week here at SDH as we take you through the USLW and the South Central and the South Atlantic. That's the story this week. We'll be back once again late next week to let you know what's going on. Play it safe, everybody. Mucha plat, y'all. That is the SDH and the USLW League.